James Lennis, I have this wine ahead. This is Fiddlehead Pinot Noir Santa Rita Hills. Stay tuned for this review. probably a very familiar bottle to many of you out there. You probably have had this label before, but I think they do a fantastic job. Santa Rita Hills, I think is really underrated. And where I sit in Northern California, it's harder to get these wines, say from Santa Rita Hills than it is say from Russian River Valley, which makes sense, right? But ultimately it's not that far away that it's harder to get these wines, but it certainly is. So I'm glad this landed on my tasting table. So here's what we have. Now this is Fiddlehead Cellars 728. Pinot Noir, Fiddle Six Vineyard, Santa Rita Hills, 2015 vintage, 13.5% ABV. Cool Pacific Ocean breezes and historic maritime soils define Fiddle Six Vineyard. So $44 price point, 13.5% ABV. And uh, reading the text sheet, I was really impressed because first of all, it gave me the breakdown of the clonal signature. And why I find that to be really dazzling is that I often get the feedback from a lot of Pinot producers what their Pinot is, that is, what is a constituent uh, clonal identity. And this I get the exact clonal identity in terms of say, 115 is 24%, 113 is 22%, clone number four is 19%, 667 is 17%, triple seven is 12%, and clone five is 6%. So I think that's a really fun way to talk about wine because if you ever get a bottle, say triple seven or 667, you can really try to just taste what that clonal identity is. So clones can express a lot of different things. So it could be the bunching, it could be the color, it could be uh, the flavor um, or the palate characterization as well as the scent characterizations. I love tasting this wine on my favorite, uh, one of my favorite glasses. This is by the producer Holmgard, a Danish producer. A beautiful uh, burgundy glass. I think it's exquisitely gorgeous and wonderful and uh, I, I need to get more of these glasses because I think they're fantastic. So, now this wine is aged 35% in new French oak. So it really has that uh, melding together of so many really harmonious things in terms of say the clonal identity as well as the alcohol point. I think it's fantastic where the fruit is grown and I think it's a really point on, very beautiful, gorgeous Pinot Noir. So on this I'm getting notes of blackberry, cassis, suede, a bit of autumnal notes, underbrush, sage, and a bit of bay leaf. Nicely done. And next, the palate experience. So if you've ever tasted a Loch Ness Blackberry, it's really harmoniously, beautifully sweet, and yet very spicy at the same time. It's one of my favorite berries. Probably the best way to taste it is to get a jam made from Loch Ness Blackberry. Additional notes are crushed red candy, a bit of white pepper notes, thyme, and again, the bay leaf comes through. So the autumnal signature comes through, the savory quality, the fruit quality, and the harmonious uh, capture of the alcohol point is really nice because it's holding together this wine remarkably well, beautifully well. This is gonna hold up nicely against other Pinot Noirs from Santa Rita Hills, and you, you could spend a lot more money, believe me, in terms of what you can spend in Santa Rita Hills or the rest of California or Oregon for Pinot Noir. It's a beautiful, delicate, wonderful wine. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support. Questions and comments down below. Right up here is the subscribe button. So please hit that button. We can also have a conversation. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, and WordPress. So thank you for your support. Many more wines to come through uh, the end of the quarter. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Something.